Okay, so th this is going to be a quick uh, presentation on satellite operations made easy. Again, just for a first approximation, just see if we can even hear a satellite. The satellite that I picked on, as Robert was mentioning, is the ISS, the International Space Station. I've had better luck with that. I think it may be because of this tumbling thing and the polarizability change. Uh, Brad uh, on Zoom has a question for you. Sure. Uh, hey, was, it may have cut out a little bit, but I was wondering on when you were doing the uh, satellites in your car, what were you just using a regular dual band antenna? Brad, say that again. I was asking when he was doing the uh, the satellites in his car. Was it just the regular mag mount dual band antenna? Uh, it was the video. The music from the video was cutting out a lot of the audio on Zoom, so I couldn't hear everything. Yes, it, it was the uh, Senegoya mag mount, but it it just it's a sixty dollar antenna and it's about yay big. Quarter wave vertical. Quarter wave vertical. Okay, cool. And the idea with this easy business here is that you might already have already what it takes, and. Uh, Give it a shot. That might be something to, to try. All right. Okay. So, so the I recommend trying the satellite. There's a satellite picking on state and ISS pass because I've had better luck with those than even AO91. And there's a few satellites that are that are that are available for you for FM. Not that many. There's a bunch of satellites that are amateur radio satellites, but they have other modes of operation, like SSB. So I don't have an SSB two meter, 70 centimeter transceiver. So I stay away from those. Or there's CW. Uh, there's beacons of CW, but to actually do CW that quick, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't got the guns up for that one yet. So I stick with uh, audio and FM. So that, that narrows it down to AO91, AO27, AO7, and ISS, as far as I can. Oh, this cast. Is that simplex? Yes, it is simplex. It's simplex in the sense that, well, let me, let me that's not a, that's a caveat. I don't think so because you're uplinking in one frequency, but the satellite is going to echo back in a separate band. But no, no, uh, still count for it. No, it always includes uh, the uh, 67 hertz CTCSS. But simplex in the way that it, it truly is not simplex because you, you, again, you're uplinking in one. And it's I guess I meant with a tone or not. With a tone or without, yeah, yeah this, this does have a 67 hertz tone. All of the satellites I've just mentioned have required. Well, this is the space station. Clarifying. This space station also. Space station has a bunch of transducers up there. So it's not just uh, this one. There's some. This is the one that I've had the best luck. These are the frequencies for it. Uh, for uplink and downlink, 67 hertz has got to be your CTCS. <coughs> the radio. You might already have that in your vehicle. Just one that has two channels that, that'll work for you. Power, the first try that you saw the video for was five watts. It, nobody heard me. So I tried 50 watts and I got two contacts the first time I, I was I tried it. So I'm pretty happy about that. The antenna, as simple as it gets. A Mac Mountain Nagoya, two meters, 70 centimeters on the roof of the vehicle. Remember, this is also an omnidirectional antenna. So we're talking as breakfast that many folks maybe just use a bow fan with five watts and they're able to ping the, the site front of the, uh, the bird. But they're also using these uh, antennas that are Yagis that are obviously very single direction of focused antennas. So that's why they I think they can get away with that little power. I'm using an omnidirectional antenna. So I'm radiating 50 watts in a donut shape. So that means that you know, it's probably not hitting the, uh, the, uh, the satellite with a lot of power. So I'm using 50 watts. And the iPhone program to find out when these passes are, I used an ISS detector. This was recommended by Oscar, OA or AMN uh, in that talk last week. So that's why I selected it. And it's, it's got all the information. Okay, so you can try these. I mean, this is what they talk about in a lot of videos out there. These are these really cool arrow antennas. Arrow, I guess, is the manufacturer. It's got a handle on one side. The fellow's usually having, or the ladies are having uh, just a bow fang or something with five watts transmitting capability. But you see them doing this stuff. And they're doing that to compensate for the polarization of the tumbling sound. 
or a moving satellite. Uh, some people who get really fancy and get uh, you know these tracking setups on tripods or on the roof mounts, and, and they actually track the, the satellite. Uh, but that was not what we were going. For. We were going for as simple as it gets. That's that's the magma of that panel. You can actually see it on the vehicle on side. It's just about yay big. You might already have that. Uh, I tried this right here, the TYT TH9800, but you might already have something like one channel over here for your rep link, one channel over here for your download, and pencil and paper, as simple as it gets. Because once they start talking, it goes very quick, and they're not going to repeat the call sign unless you you're lucky enough for that one station to be contacting a second station or a second station contacting them. You get a second shot, so you have to write down their call sign. Okay. It's, that's probably the most challenging. You're very quick and you have to learn. Uh, satellite truck tracking software is, is important. You want to know exactly what's the uplink frequency, downlink frequency of, of what, uh, what satellite. You might, again, try the ISS first. They've, they've got the, you know, a very, very good signal coming down. So that might be. This is one software, that, and there's many of them. This one you can get on your PC, but it doesn't, you know, unless you pay for the version, the full version, it, it sort of covers one of the frequencies. So they're sneaky about that. You can't move that little advertisement window out of the way so you don't know what frequency they're transmitting. So, but anyway, like ISS detector runs on your, on your iPhone and gives you all the information. Excuse me, just like, let me, let me just jump in here for a second. We got a bunch of new, our uh, hands today, everybody passed their test. Young man here, he got 100 on this technician test. So that oh, was great. Right. Uh, three techs, a general, and an extra. Everybody passed. Guys, thanks very much. Yay. Thank you. And congratulations to the new test. So, polarization. Not going to delve into this too much, but it's just a reminder. It's how you orient your antenna. If it's either polarized in this direction in the vertical axis, then that's where the waves are going for, and that's what you're going to be listening for. If you go horizontal, they're going to be in the horizontal axis. So that's why you see these people moving their antennas so they can match the polarization of the emitting transmitter. As Ralph was mentioning, this is the, uh, the parking garage at a, a middle school or junior high near where I live. And that, there's not that many cars when I was out there, but you did, I just set up in the middle there where I have as least of obstructions as possible. Trees are not your friends at least in these frequencies, so they're going to absorb your signals and they're going to block the signals from the satellite. So look out for trees and structures. They will block you and you won't be able to see. So you, ideally, you want to be out, actually out in a field. I actually drove out to Fulshire and actually just went out to, a, to the middle of nowhere, to, sort of like a cow pasture, and tried my luck there. I found that Beck Junior High, this Junior High here is just as well. So just a good empty parking lot will work. And this, these are so far just the, my, the different, uh, different contacts I've tried and I've not made. Where you see NC, that's no contact. So you can see that quite a few of these have been dry runs. So there's a bunch of, so the ISS was contacted there, no contact. You know, cast 3H and other satellite, no contact. But every once in a while, you know, God's smile on it, and you're able to get N6 EFD, that's a California station, Delta Mike 03, the Los Angeles area, W4KSY, Northern Georgia, E question mark four. According to QRZ, he's an E74, but I, I was only able to hear E4. And this one is in the driveway of the house, driveway. Fulshire when I drove out to the cow pasture and I got no contacts. So that was not good. Back to junior high, I heard this one fellow in 5CI. I heard him and he said, okay, QSL. So I think we made a contact there. I tried it from the shack on this one, no contacts. And no. So it's just hit or miss. It's, it's fun. It's fun. The, the, the astronauts on the space shuttle will talk, I mean, on the space station will talk to you. Yes. Yeah. Do they use the same frequencies or a different one? No, that's a very good question. Uh, somebody asked about that. But can you hear the astronauts? Yes, you can. If they're you know so inclined to be transmitting it, wanting to have a QSO with you. 
it's not on these frequencies. This is actually one of the, remember the space station has a bunch of stuff, transmitters, transducers, so transceptor. And if you go at 145.990 uplink and receive on 437.8 downlink, you're talking to their repeater. It's like K5 QIG, like Wayne's repeater, right. but 427 kilometers up. Right. So, so that's where you're talking there. On another frequency, they operate NA1SS, I think it is. And that's the space station people. And that's where you, it's a different set of frequencies. They're prepared. And you can talk to somebody there and they talk to you. They talk to schools a lot and things like that. Yeah. Then they've got another frequency they use for uh, images. That's right. And again, if you just want to get your feet wet, hopefully this has motivated everybody just to get their feet wet. Try getting an image from the space station. Every once in a while, you'll see it on the ARL side or somewhere else. Hey, there's this celebration of 50th anniversary of blah, blah, blah. They're transmitting images from the space station between this day and this day. So just go ahead and put out your Mac mount, see your ISS detector, your favorite program, when that ISS is flying over, and see what you can pick up. You'd be surprised. It's 12 close. minutes, Stephen. When they do that, you've got 12 minutes max. It's quick. Yeah, yeah. it's quick. Yeah. So is it an SLS TV signal? Yes. Uh -huh. Exactly. It is an SSTV signal. Exactly. And remember, we, we did this presentation some years ago also. This SSTP was actually what they used in the Apollo 11 landing, right? Remember the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing? That was like uh, yesterday, wasn't it? It was like yesterday, indeed. And uh, they used that in the telemetry. It's audio that was uh, writing in the telemetry data stream, and they could actually see these images. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. And yeah, it's it's only 11 minutes. It's, it's very quick. And uh, just, just to give you an idea, this thing is booking. I mean, the ISS is what seven point six kilometers a second. I mean, it's, it, that's what the saying. Earth in ninety minutes. Ninety minutes. Just, yeah. Yeah, do the math there. It's pretty fast. So hopefully, this motivated you to just give it a shot, and uh, and you'd be surprised at what you're able to get.